Benvenidos a todos. Welcome to everybody. I wish I could have said that in Japanese, but since um, since uh, I only speak a little bit of Spanish, that'll have to do. So anyway, what's going on here is that after having played my campaign, I decided that the first round of, of uh, Care Strike um, tests that I did was probably a little bit too sterile, and I needed to redo them again to see if I could get a bit more realistic results from what would be um, a person versus person, two people fighting um, um, CV battles, okay? And I set up two different uh, scenarios, and each scenario I ran them 25 times. I kept all the statistics for each battle, how many ships were sunk of each class, on both sides of the battle, and I tried to play um, the player, e the, each side, as if I was actually the player having to make the decisions of what happened in that battle. So let me show you my methodology, okay? So first, I started with this, the 6v6 version 2, which I call the Japanese attacker, okay? The Japanese attacker. So let's take a look and see how I set up this test. These tests took a long time, huh? Because I was very meticulous with these tests. All right. So what we see here is that I have two submarines. Something that in my in my um, in my game against the AI, I would always have submarine support around my task force. And I would always try to make sure I had land-based air also in support of my task force. And I think that is very realistic. And I think if you're an American player and you're not putting out pickets, you're not supporting your aircraft carriers with land-based air, you're doing something wrong. Okay? You do not want to fight Japanese strictly out in the middle of the ocean. Okay? So in this situation... We're set up basically for um, an ambush, okay? We're there. We've got two, two points each, okay? Let's take a look at the task force. Now, the task forces, I built them both the same for both the Japanese and the Americans. And the task force are com are com com uh, uh, consist of six aircraft carriers, three battleships, three cruisers and two destroyers okay and what you'll find is that when I go over to the Japanese side we'll take a look at the Japanese um, task force okay they're basically all at a hundred hundred percent effectiveness all of my guys have 60 percent the Japanese there's a couple ships with a little bit more but essentially the ships themselves are all the same both Japanese and American the big difference is is the experience level of the air crews. Okay, so this is basic. They're they're at their basic starting point of fifty percent. Okay, and you probably if you're you probably if you're playing, you know, PvP, you probably want to be making airstrikes and other places against land units, for example, or air units to punch those numbers up and I found that basically when you attack if I was to take this group and attack this group here okay it would probably go up by about one percent somewhere around one percent okay so you don't want to just keep them in Pearl Harbor if, if you know for the whole war here if possible but anyway that goes beyond the test so there's a setup I had I had a um, strategic bomber over here with uh, naval air training and I used him in the test but this guy didn't do nothing okay well this guy which is a also naval air trained is is a um, a tactical group and they actually did do damage and sank ships so having air power helps 
Okay, and that's why the Japanese also have um, an error unit over here as well. So here was the setup. Okay, so now what I did was I ended the turn because this is the Japanese attacker uh, scenario. Okay, and I come over here. Here we are down here with the U.S. And over here is the Japanese task force. Okay, and notice... Notice their aircraft, 57, 56, 56, 56. We're at 50. The U.S. is at 50, and the Japanese are at 57. Okay, so if you're, so if, as an American, I'm just going to make these comments. It doesn't have anything to do with the test. If you're an American and you're hiding in Pearl Harbor and the Japanese guy is going around bombing people, okay, his, his, his experience level is going to just keep going up and up and up. And... When you finally do get the guts up to fight, fight the Japanese, well, you know, pff, they're going to be much more experienced than you. But that's beyond this test, okay? So back to the test. So here, now we're actually at the part of doing the test, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the carrier down here, right to this, right to this hex here, okay, which is three from him and three from him and three from the um, American Task Force and within range of their tactical air, okay? And then we see what happens. Okay, so we had a battle. We had a battle, okay? So let's see what happened in that battle. Okay. So first of all, we notice that the Allied Naval Strike Group actually did two points of damage on a Japanese um, battleship. Okay. And now we take a look at what happens here. Notice the, the Americans are the attackers because even though I'm saying it's a Japanese attacker, since the Japanese is, are coming in here, it's actually the Americans who attack first. All right. And the Japanese are the defenders. So, they lose two aircraft carriers and two points on a, on a DD. While the Japanese, again, I mean, if you're playing, I mean, you gotta, you got to watch this stuff. you got to look at these reports. Eh? Japanese has lost two, uh, two points on two aircraft carriers and one point on one aircraft carrier. Okay, so, happens what happens. I'm going to launch. Let's make sure that we, yes, we have them. So we're going to do airstrikes. Another airstrike. And let's take a look and see what, what that ended up with. So their, their airstrike did one damage to a battleship. Now I go to the Japanese, okay? Now the Japanese have only one operational point. So that means, as a player, I have to make a decision. Okay, as a fleet commander, I have to make a decision. Do I continue this battle? Because if I continue this battle and I strike them, okay, then I'm stuck there, and it's going to go to another round, and the next round, the Americans are going to get to attack me twice. Okay? So I take a look at my ships. All right, and as, I can, as you can see, I have six carriers. Okay? But I have two that are pretty badly beaten up and another one that's taken a hit. All right. They have four CVs. Okay. Now, for this, you know, if, if I was a human player, what I would do is I would take this carrier and this carrier and I would send them away. Okay. I would, I would have them detach. Okay. And that's very easy to do. You know, you just choose them and then you can move them out of the out of the battle okay that's what I would do that's what I would do if I was an actual human but for the test what I'm doing is I'm saying as a Japanese would I continue the assault as a fleet commander okay and because my my air air assets my air crew my, you know I have five out of six this one has four. I mean, yeah, these guys may get sunk, 
but this is a this is a very powerful air air group that I can send into the Americans. So I'm going to say, I'm going to attack. All right, I'm going to attack and see if I can knock out another American carrier. Okay, so let's see what happens. So in this case, they sunk a Japanese battleship and the Japanese sunk an American battleship and put two hits on the on another American battleship. So so I used up my operational points over to the Americans. So now it's gonna be and now you, you can see the damage here. And two US CVs sunk. And a, and, a, and a BB and the Japanese lost one 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 battle cruiser. Okay, so let's come back over to the battle here. Okay. All right. First, I needed to check and make sure. And you see here that I do not. I I know that there's certain issue. I want better intel than that. That's why I put these submarines here. Okay, so I move him over here. Make a sub attack. I lose my sub. I lost my sub, but now I know I've got. I'm facing six CVs, so that's why that sub was there. All right. So once again, I'm going to start off, and I'm going to, I'm going to let him have it. Two air strikes. I sunk one, and another. So let's see what happened. Naval air strike. I sunk a carrier. Okay. And I did one hit to another carrier. All right, so they're now at five. One, two, three, four. I'm at four. My air wings are down to one third. I have four carriers. He has five carriers. My air wings are depleted. End of battle. Okay, I would not pursue this battle. Okay, even though my my aircraft, my my ships themselves, have suffered no damage because my air wings are so low, that I'm I'm if I if I you know I could try one, but I'm probably going to lose all of my aircraft. Let's let's just see. I in this situation I said, Americans go home. Okay, let's try it. And let's see what we got here. So we sunk another um, aircraft carrier, and they sunk a cruiser. All right, let's take a look at. And we're now down to nothing for 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 um, air wings. So now it's time to run away. And about okay. So that was that's what that's how um, I that was the test. Okay, that was the that's what I call the Japanese attacking test okay and even though I said that you know in this case I'd run away it was I, I mixed it up okay in some cases I said okay I'm going to take the risk other cases I said no I'm going to run away just to 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 kind of get you know to see kind of how it all would work out after 25 tests okay so let's go back over here and take a look at the Japanese and then I'm going to discuss what, what actually I found, what actually happened in those 25 battles, okay? And here you see, you know, they've lost two carriers. One is very close to being uh, sunk. They, they have enough air wings to do at least one strike, okay? Okay. Should we do it? Okay, we'll do it. Let's see what happens. And we do two um, hits on the on the CV, but nobody is actually sunk. So end of battle for sure. All right, now. So that's what I was doing, and in some cases, you know, I was conservative. In other cases, I was rash. 
Um, I tried to mix mix up the results. Um, I had a feeling that sometimes the um, the the computer, the game was leaning to one side or another, and I would actually exit the entire game and return back in. So that I, once again, I tried to do as much as I could to randomize stuff, and um, and uh, and then see what the results were. Whether you think this is a valid test or not, that's up to you. That's why I'm presenting it. Okay. So here's here's what the results were. Okay, in ships. Okay. Um, the Japanese lost in the 25. We're going to talk about the 25 um, strikes that I did. The 25 battles that I did. Okay. In those 25 battles. Okay. In the Japanese attack, for ships, okay, the Japanese lost 54. Okay, this is all ships, CVs, BBs, cruisers, and destroyers. The Jap the Japanese lost 54, and the Americans lost 79. So that's a two to three ratio, more or less. So the so pretty good for the Japanese. Okay. Um, in when you consider just carriers. Okay. The Japanese lost 39 carriers and the Americans lost 47 carriers. So so you know it's like um you know Japanese definitely have a an advantage there. It's like what about a 1.5 kill death ratio? Okay. But still not terrifically wild and out of the realm of possibility. Okay, and for aircraft strikes, okay, that is, did an aircraft strike kill an aircraft carrier? And the Japanese lost three CVs to ground strikes. Okay, to my, my bombers. And the U.S. lost two. And then um, I looked at um, how many cases in those 25 battles did was there more than three, um, three or more losses of aircraft carriers during those battles. Okay, which would be a, which would if the, if if one side lost three or more, aircraft aircraft carriers, that would be a that would be a a major defeat. Okay, okay, and this happened to the Japanese seven times, and it happened to the United States nine times. So once again, you, you know, I mean, some po folks are saying that the that the that the CV are way out of balance, but what I'm seeing actually when I do this is that, well, that might not be quite true, okay? Now, now, and, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm using aircraft carrier, I'm using aircraft backing up my aircraft carriers, and this is, I think, maybe something people aren't doing, okay? But you need to do it. So anyway, that's the way the Japanese um, um, test went. All right. So now let's go to what I call the American attack test. Okay. Here we go. Six v six American attack. And once again, I'm going to explain how I did it. And then I did I did this experiment 25 times, and noted all the um, all the um, um, results, okay? And every time there was a clash, whether that's an airstrike or whatever, I always looked to see what exactly happened. If you are playing as a player and you're not looking at that combat log, okay, then you don't have any idea of how much damage you've actually done to the other player. So it's very important 
that you look at each strike and say, what did I do? Okay, so in this case, okay, we got a Japanese submarine over here, American submarine, a little bit different. It's basically the same. They have a tactical bomber. We have a tactical bomber. Here is the Japanese. Okay, and this time they're the ones who are sitting here waiting for the Americans. All right? So I end a turn. And this is what I call the American attack um, scenario. All right. I didn't show you this, but they actually can't see this aircraft carrier. Okay. So here's my aircraft carrier. Here's my task force, my American task force. And once again, just like I said, same setup. Okay. The only difference is who is actually going into going into the area of battle first. Okay. So in the last in the first group of tests, it was the Japanese coming in. And then in the second, it's the Americans coming in. Okay. So off we go. I'm going to send these carriers in. And we're going to see what's going to happen. All okay. right. So there was a battle. And we can see here right off, okay, that we lost two, two um, CVs. All right, let's take a look at the combat log. So we have naval inter interdiction, okay. Okay, now, this sometimes happens, which is strange, yeah? Because it only, it only notes that I lost one CV when I actually lost two. I'm pretty sure I actually lost two. Okay, Hornet has received damage. Lexington has received damage. Two battleships and a cruiser has. But the, but the question for me, because I'm the Americans, is how much damage did I do to them? Okay, and so I see here that I've done five points of damage to three of their aircraft carriers. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back and take a look. Was I right or not? How many aircraft carriers? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so we only lost one aircraft carrier. All right. Okay, six CVs, so I know I've got them targeted. I know their location, so I launched my two aircraft, uh, two aircraft strikes. One, two. Then I check my combat log. Yep, yep, nothing. Okay, nothing significant. Okay, no actual damage done to their battle groups. Okay, and so here I am, and I'm looking, and I'm saying, okay, I've lost one, and but I've got, I've got, I've got striking capability here, and. I've done five points of damage here. I've lost one aircraft carrier, but there's a good there's a possibility I have enough aircraft to do him some grievous harm, so I go ahead and attack. Now that you may think, okay, that's a stupid move. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Like I say, sometimes I was conservative, sometimes I was rash, sometimes I was kinda in the middle. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens here. Carrier combat. And we lose a, a battleship, but we sink a Japanese carrier. All right. Okay, so now we are one, two, three, four. We're now down to four carriers, and they have five. So it probably wasn't a good idea because... When we switch back over, now it's the Japanese turn. Airstrike, they sink one. Airstrike, okay, so let's see what happened there. Oh, they suck one of our carriers. All right. 
So now the Americans have four. The Japanese have one, two, three, four, five. They have five carriers, all in good condition, great air wings, absolutely no reason not to do two strikes on these guys. So there's one, and there's two. And this looks like a decisive defeat for the Americans. So let's take a look. And they lost two aircraft carriers here and another one here with damage to a battleship so and one two three four five one two three four five so we lost one the Japanese lost one carrier and the Americans lost five okay now my testing um, um, let me take a look here. How many times did that happen? Okay. It didn't... The most the most American carriers that were lost in my 25 tests were four. So in other words, I was being a little bit too rash there. I backed off if I, if, if I got really hurt, if the, if the Americans got really hurt, um, I would back off and not let something like that happen. Okay, but... That's the testing. That is what happens in that test. Okay. So no, I would not allow. I would not allow um, the American fleet to get slaughtered. I would run away. And there were and there were times in these tests where, in a single airstrike, the Japanese would would um, sink three carriers. So here we are again. Switch sides. Okay, let's go on over here. Here's the American uh, task force ready to attack. And we go. And we had three ships sunk there. So we have naval interdiction. Okay. Air interdiction. Naval air interdiction. Okay. So that's their strike group. Okay. And they do two damage to the Yorktown. Carrier interdiction. And look here. We, we sunk two Japanese carriers. And we lost the Hornet. Okay. But at the same time, so they've got two, they've lost two carriers and they've had one carrier with one hit of damage onto it. Okay, you've got to analyze the situation. And I've got one sunk carrier and I've got two with two two hits of damage on it. Okay, so let's take a look at at um, the situation here. Okay, all of these carriers are in danger of being sunk because they're down to one. All right, so what I do is. I first I make sure I've got them spotted. I do two attacks. And not found. Okay, so I'm facing four CVs. I've got five CVs. I've got five CVs. At four. I'm at five. I got plenty, plenty of aircraft, but I've got a lot of hurt aircraft. So you know, toss up. I mean, do you run away? Probably in the real game, one v one, because you're going. You, if if you attack again. Um, you're going to lose aircraft carriers. And then the Japanese are going to get two carrier strikes on you. So run away. So that's how that this battle would end. Okay. But let's just see what happens. And yeah. We lose, I told you, we, we lose one aircraft carrier there. So you got you got you to look at it. You got to think about it. 
You got to make a good decision. All right. Let's come back over to here. Here's the Japanese. See, they lost two aircraft carriers. All right. Probably should have called it quits. Yeah. That wasn't a bad result. They have um, half their air wing, so we're going to get at least one strike in. All right. You see here, do we, ha do we have them? Yep, four key CVs. Two airstrikes. No significant damage. Sorry about that. Looking at my my carriers. My carriers are even though they've got one hit each, they're it's a good you know they probably will survive. There's a chance they will won't. I've got enough air wings. So I, I've got two two um objective points, operational points. So in this case I would I attack. Okay, and let's see what happened there. Okay, and the Kaga gets another big hit, and the Mississippi takes one hit, and my air wings now are reduced to two, and so um, because I, I I have one operation point, I say I'm going to leave this battle. Okay, I leave this battle. Right. I've lost two. He's lost two. Good enough. Okay. So that was that was what I called the American attack. And now let's go let's go over the statistics for the American attack. Okay. So this is with the American group coming in first. Okay. So in ships, okay, the Japanese lost fifth in the twenty five twenty five battles that I fought for the ships. The Japanese lost 50 and the Americans lost 71 which is like 2 to 3. Very similar to the other uh, when the Japanese attacked. For CVs okay, the Japanese lost 31 and the Americans lost 46. And that's in comparison to um, the, the Japanese attack in which the Japanese lost 39. Okay, so there's an eight carrier um, difference there. All right, eight carrier difference as far as aircraft kills. Um, the Japanese had three carriers um, destroyed by um, land based aircraft, and the U.S. had four carriers destroyed by land aircraft and as far as how many battles were there when there were more than three were there three or more CVs lost Japanese had three and the US had seven okay so notice the if and you know there is a big difference here between the two scenarios there's a big difference okay what is that what is that difference that difference is who comes in first okay who comes in first and since the Japanese are already a little bit more superior because of their ships what it tells you is that if you even if you know where their where their carriers are it's probably not a good idea to rush in and attack them especially if they have aircraft in support okay far better to let them come in and attack you okay far better okay that's what that shows me um, so the guy who moves into contact is going to be the guy who most likely is going to suffer the worst okay although 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 the Japanese are still going to do better okay than the Americans if the Americans are the ones who are going in there they're going to really 
really take it in the butt, okay? So you don't want to do that. So the best thing to do, like I say, it appears to me, okay, you want to, and how you fight these battles, they seem kind of, you know, I, I, can, I can believe them. I can believe what's going on here, okay? It, and, and when you hear people talking about how the American CVs always lose to the, to the Japanese CVs, well, that very well be, probably is because, because the Americans are charging. They've, oh, we found the Japanese CC, CVs. Let's go, let's go and attack them, okay? No, 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 do not do that. Okay. All right. You need to set up where you have air cover and and let the Japanese try to come to you. That is the most favorable situation. Okay? And that actually if we want to talk about real life battles, let's talk about Midway. Who was the one sitting there waiting? The Americans. They had they had as many aircraft on Midway as they had on their three aircraft carriers. Okay? And it was the Japanese, say this is Midway, it's the Japanese who come in first. And it's the Americans who strike them first. Okay? Both with the land based air, which was negligible. Okay? They didn't really do much of anything except tie them down, okay, but it was the Americans who strike first, and they get a decisive victory out of that, and so, and, and when I look at, I look at my results, the game does mimic that, and so I have to pull back from some of um, my criticism about the CV attacks and the CV battles. It has to be, you have to it appears that if you put them in more of a context of an actual battle situation in which you have aircraft support, for example, that, that the circumstance of the battle is going to make a big difference. Okay? Now, the Americans still lose. But what if... What if... I own these two islands, and I've got tactical aircraft on on those um, uh, islands as well. I mean, if the Japanese come in, and I get two attacks, two attacks, two attacks with land-based air, I think you come down to a draw, or or the Americans winning. So it all depends on how you set up the um, attack, how you work your strategy, and what you do with your aircraft carriers. And so, like I would say, I would recommend that um, use tactical air as much as possible to to provide air cover over your CV. Um, try to get experience. Maybe it's not over here. Maybe maybe it's a maybe it's a hit and run, okay? But hit them and run, okay? Because every time you hit them, okay, your your experience level is going to go up. Okay, remember these guys were what? What were they at? Fifty-seven, okay. Fifty-seven, fifty-six. I notice they've gone up to sixty, sixty-two. So. Each attack more or less gives you um, um, one point of uh, of uh, increase in your um, effectiveness of your pilot of your pilots. So you c do not do not keep your aircraft carriers sitting in a port. All right, and when you're going against another player and you're fighting in this area you better well have um, air cover and do not rush 
the Chinese, the Japanese carriers. So anyway, that is, that was my um, latest test on CV battles. Um, uh, that's what I came up with. I mean, and that's how I played my tr my campaign, my my CVs at at the very beginning of the game, my CV task force. I was always always putting tactical air, okay, in these islands. Always had submarines, okay, to make sure that I could ID, ID, identify the um, the um, um, attacking ships in case I didn't have a firm um, identification on them. Um, using combined arms, and you know what within you know by the um, middle of. Um, 1942 was it 1942 yeah I think it was the middle of 1942 I had completely obliterated the Japanese fleet of course and that's that's against the AI it's not against a person but hopefully this test will give you a little bit better understanding on how the mechanics work and what you need to do to try to offset that superiority that the Japanese have at the beginning of the game. Remember, remember that while you're sitting in Pearl Harbor, if he's taking his carriers, and while he's capturing the Philippines and all this, he's doing airstrikes. Okay, his his carriers pilots are gaining even more and more experience, and your carrier aircraft pilots sitting in Pearl Harbor aren't any earning anything, so that by the time you do get into a battle. Okay. He's he may be his carriers pilots may be in their seventies and you're in your, in the fifties. Who's gonna win those battles? Who's gonna win those battles? So there you go. Results of another C V test. Uh C V versus C V test for War Plan Pacific. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it um I'm not really entertaining. I, I, I'm really not an entertaining kind of YouTuber, okay? Hope you found it maybe a little bit enlightening and learned a little something. I don't know. Till next time, y'all take care.